Hello, Aries. I'm gonna get right into the reading. So whatever the cards wanna say, I really appreciate your comments. I love hearing your stories. I love seeing the comments below. And it really helps me too because I'm trying to, like I've said, I'm trying to get back in the YouTube algorithm and get my my videos promoted by YouTube again. So it helps other people see these readings too when you guys like the videos and comment below. So thank you guys so much for the support. Let's get into it. Creator, catalyst, maker, mother, father, transgression, flaws, contradictions, mistake, enlightenment, and spiritual, or I don't know why I said spiritual, uh, inspiration, epiphany, innovation, natural, authentic, real, organic, allure, desire, manipulation, seduction, courtesy, thirst, craving, compulsion, obsession, sacrifice, letting go, anti-hero, risk-taker, rule-breaker, nobility, honor, high standards, idealistic. Sorry, sometimes I have to pause so I can just look at the cards and just channel and I like I focus in on the visuals too because I'm like, I'm looking at her and look how seductive she looks. This could be, you could be male or female. You know, if I say female, but you're a male, just, just take it as it resonates. This could also be a gay or lesbian relationship as well. Just take it as it resonates here. Um, but whether you're male or female, it's like you're really seductive. Like somebody's, I feel, I feel like you're catching somebody's attention here. Um, I feel like there is kind of a warning here, too, to make sure that people around you love you for the right reasons. Because some of you are going through a glow up and it's like now you have this person's attention where it's like they didn't really. They might not have seen you before, you know, and, and now it's like now someone's been enlightened. They're seeing you in a different light. I feel like you're changing as well. Um so you're going to have to use discernment whether this is somebody that you can trust or not. I'm going to I'm going to use tarot to get more into it and get more insight into this energy. But basically the energy overall that I'm getting so far is just that you're going through a glow up um, and somebody's noticing this and they're they have a strong sexual desire for you. I'm getting a lot of sexual energy with this kind of like you kind of see her outfit down here. You see how like lusty that is. And it's almost like right here. It looks like she, he or she is naked. Um, and then we have like thirst, craving, compulsion, obsession. We have the kind of, it almost looks like, like all these cards look very sexual to me, honestly. Um, I think somebody really admires who you are as a person too. I feel like you're unlike anyone that they've ever known because we have creator here. It's like you can take a bad situation and you can turn it into something. It's like catalyst, maker, mother, father, energy. It's like you can take something negative and you can just make it your own. You're you're not a follower type. You're more of a leader type. You're very creative. You're very free spirited. You know your flaws. You know what your mistakes are and you own those flaws. You own those mistakes. All of those things are a part of who you are. Um, it's like you're natural, you're authentic, you're real, you're organic. Um, and I feel like I feel like just being yourself just sets an example for this person, even just simply just just the way that you communicate, the way that you carry yourself. This person could be watching you on social media as well. But it's like something about you, just how real you are, how organic, how natural you are, how, you know, you merge the darkness and the light. It's like you 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 don't let your flaws and insecurities get the best of you. You you own them. You know, like I said, it's like if you if there's something you don't like about yourself, you you still admit to it. You don't try to pretend like you're perfect. You're just you're very real. And I feel like just it's like setting an example for this person. It's like you inspire this person. This person like it's like you bring about these epiphanies. I feel like you're a very deep thinker as well. Like you're not you you kind of pave the way for other people. I think early on in life you might have. Um, I'm getting for some just that like you struggled with the path or you struggled. You didn't know how to be a leader, but I feel like now you're figuring out how to be a leader because I feel like in the past some of you were like you didn't really. I feel like your your way, how do I explain it? It's like your spiritual path was very unique or your way of thinking, your way of doing things is just very unique. And you might have met a lot of resistance with that in the past where it's like people didn't understand your thought process. They didn't understand the way your mind works. 
but it's like now you're kind of learning to bring those ideas and manifest them in, in the physical world. You're learning how to create your own path so people can follow you because before it's like you had these ideas, but it's like you weren't communicating your ideas properly or you might have just gone through a phase where you felt like you didn't have much to say or you would just were meant with like jealousy or resistance. Um, but yeah, it's like now you're finding your own path and you're you're able to step into that leadership role more and people are following you, especially this person is very inspired by you. I feel like you kind of cause these epiphanies for this person because of and that might have been part of what you didn't understand before is about your flaws like you might have been like well how can I be a leader if I'm you know if I have this mental illness or if I have this uh, physical disability or if I have this uh you know just different things like if I have this uh if I'm in a, in a wheelchair like how do I how can I possibly be a leader it's like you kind of have like this confusion you're like well how can I you know because you were seeing all these other people that were leaders and they just did things a drastically different way and they might have been more positive than you but now you're learning your purpose in the world you're learning to you're learning that those flaws you're learning that that darkness is a part of your identity and it's a part of your your path what you're meant to teach people the the way that you're leading people it's like you're you're balancing you're merging the darkness and the light you're you know can't have one without the other and i want to say too there is a drastic difference between darkness and evil i'm not talking about evil i'm not talking about demonic shit no I'm talking about like darkness. That's that's not the same as evil. Darkness is like it might be pain or anger or, you know, supposed negative emotions or um, just things that aren't just completely positive all the time. You know what I mean? It's it's like darkness can be a lot of different things, but it's not evil. So you're, you're balancing the light and the darkness. You're balancing, you know, your flaws, your mistakes, things that you've past experiences, um, I'm hearing past life experiences too. It's like all of those things. It's like you're, you know, they're they they're all kind of making up a part of who you are now, and so you're able to to show that to other people. You're able to just be your true self, and it's like I feel like this person really admires too that you're able to. Um, and I'm gonna get more into this energy, this kind of sexual energy, this seductive energy, because somebody is watching you right now, either a new person or someone from the past. But we're gonna get into it with tarot. But I was just going to wrap up this portion of the reading. Basically, you know, noble, nobility, honor, high standards, idealistic, anti-hero. I feel like somebody really admires this about you too. They admire that you're a risk taker, a role breaker, the anti-hero type. But at the same time, you're, you know, you're idealistic and you have high standards. You have that sense of honor and integrity. So it's like you do these things, but you don't do them in a negative way. Does that make sense? It's like you might break rules, but you only break rules that are toxic rules that shouldn't be there in the first place. You know, you're a, th a free thinker, basically. Um, yeah, there is a warning here too, not to, just to be aware of somebody that's like, it's like they're finally seeing these things about you, but it's like, why didn't they see them before? You know, where were they all this time? Um, but somebody is being seduced by you. Somebody, this is a strong sexual energy here. Somebody is really being seduced by you. Somebody is really watching you. They're watching the way that you do things. And I think that they're also aware that they're going to have to let go of an aspect of themselves. It's kind of like they're they're following your example. So this person is kind of aware that they might not. I don't want to say they have to let go of an aspect of themselves. It's not really letting go of an aspect of themselves so much as it's letting go of blocks. They might have identified with these blocks to the point where the blocks actually felt like part of their personality. But I think that this person knows deep down that like those blocks are just their blocks. They're not actually a part of who they are. You know, it's almost like this person's following your example, but they're kind of aware that if they want to catch up to you, that they're going to have to kind of open their mind up. They're going to have to, they can't stay in stagnant energy. They can't keep not acting or just doing things the way that they have been. This feels like somebody who hasn't taken action or they've just been in like kind of like a limited mentality, like, you know, seeing the, the seeing from only their perspective, um, or maybe just like holding on to traumas or holding on to past experiences. And it just kind of seems like this person is aware that if they want to catch up to you, if they want to, because it's like they're trying to seduce you in a way like energetically. It's like they're, you guys might be sexually thinking about each other right now. Um, so it's like it's it's kind of like, you know, like this is like a little seductive, but it's still like it's it, this is like foreplay. You know what I mean? It's not or I don't know if foreplay is the right word. It's not. um 
you see how here he or she has their clothes off and, and right here it's just like seductive so I almost take that as like it's like they're trying to seduce you in a way like they're or they're thinking about you like especially sexually but they're kind of aware like and they are like really like like you are heavily on their mind and you're probably both you know maybe telepathically communicating even or both thinking about each other but they have this awareness that it's like they have to I see this as vulnerability too like I see it not just I, I feel like her being not wearing any clothes it's like a sign of like vulnerability it's you know it's it's kind of see how like the the how this kind of transitions basically where it's like okay that they're thinking about you they're fantasizing but if they want to make this real if they want to take it to the next step they're kind of aware that they have to they have to be vulnerable or it's like they have to they have to take that next step Otherwise, it's just going to end up kind of fading away at some point. You know, it's like they, they are kind of becoming aware that it, that they have to make this real, that they have to do something because this is just the first step. But I feel like that's not going to get them very far. It's just, you know what I mean? It's like they, they're going to have to, they're, they're aware that they're going to have to let something go. And that could be letting go of their armor. It could be letting go of their defense mechanisms. It could be letting go of, like I said, like, you know, past trauma, um, certain ways of just, just narrow-minded ways of thinking it's it's kind of like they have to kind of open their mind up they have to they have to step out of their comfort zone if they want to make this real okay what do you guys want to say about this seven of wands three of pentacles five of swords three of wands Three of Cups, the Wheel, the Four of Wands. I'm seeing a few different messages here. For some, I feel like it's like this person wants to fight for you, but they don't express their emotions well, so it might come off as anger. It's like they want to build something with you. They want that stability. They want to stand their ground. They want to build this. But it's it's almost like they just they it's like they it comes out as anger, it comes out as like competition, where it's like they're not like a power struggle kind of energy where it's like they're not expressing their emotions the right way. It's like they're trying to express love, but there's so much there that it's like they end up expressing anger or coming off the wrong way there might be miscommunication for others I feel like there either is a third party or there could be a third party and that is coming to an end I also just kind of see this as like this person wants to step up and build something with you they want to stand their ground they want to come claim you um, and they want to like they want to build this with you because I think they have this awareness that if they don't it's like it's like now is like the right time like the door is open right now but that door might be not be open forever so I feel like they kind of have this awareness that like it's pretty much like they need to it's like kind of like a now or never energy where it's like they they're becoming aware that they need to do this now because it's like at some point they like you You might not have a third party necessarily but it's like they have this awareness that if they take too long it's like eventually there might be somebody that tries to block them from building this with you or it could even be somebody on there and like a third party or like a friend or family member that doesn't want to see you guys together but either way I think that cycle's wrapping up I think the divine is stepping in to bring you know peace stability I, I think that this third party is being, whether it's on your end or theirs, I feel like some kind of third party is being cleared away. Or like I said, for some, it's not even that there is a third party, but it's just in this person's head. They're like, you know what, I should probably step up now because, you know, there might eventually be a third party. And, you know, now the door is open. Like, do you really want to wait until there actually is a third party and things get much more complicated and you might not have an, as easy a time as, as getting back in at that point? But something, some kind of third party energy is being cleared away. Let's look more into all this, all this energy to what's going on. Page of Wands, Eight of Swords, King of Wands. Hmm. Nine of Cups reversed. Nine of Cups. I don't, I don't, I don't know why I said Knight. <laughs> Somebody's having, 
some somebody is somebody feels trapped basically like some eight of swords traditionally it's like somebody who's it's like they have these swords all around them so they're not noticing that their their dreams are right in front of their face because they're so focused on the swords around them it's like victim kind of mentality nine of cups reversed i take that as like somebody's wishes not being granted not being fulfilled and i feel like this person is just like overthinking they're just, they're just so in their head and they're in this victim mentality not knowing how to move forward not knowing how to manifest that not knowing how to wanting to build this with you but not knowing what to do next there is a very sexual energy here so it's like somebody is thinking about you sexually i feel and they are it's like with these cards we got it's like they do want to catch up to you they do want to let go of the blocks let go of whatever's been keeping you guys apart whether that's a third party or maybe just like a limited way of of viewing the world or viewing relationships it might just be just whatever whatever's been keeping them from you know moving forward and being the person that they want to be and having the kind of life and relationship that they want it's like they they have this awareness that they're if they're going to catch up if they're going to get on their path and and live the life that they want to live that they they're you know going to need to make some some sacrifices of of toxic people or toxic ways of thinking that are holding them back but nothing that's not in i mean they're only going to be letting go of things that are not in alignment with who they really are they're not going to be letting go they don't have to like let go of personality traits or things that like really are genuinely a part of who they are this would be like i said just letting go of like blocks letting go of um other people's beliefs that have you know kind of imprinted in their minds or letting go of toxic people or letting go of you know um just toxic views that kind of stemmed from trauma but it, it's not really in alignment with their soul's views with like what their what their true beliefs are it's almost like there's two separate different it's almost like there's two different sets of belief systems they're they're on a deeper level it's like this person has a more ideal idealistic more romantic i don't know if idealistic is the right word they have a more balanced, more like king or queen of pentacles type of energy, like a more balanced belief system. But on like on on a more conscious like 3D level from all the trauma, I feel like they, they have some like beliefs that just stem from that trauma. But they don't really feel right to this person. You know what I mean? Like they don't feel like like the, the beliefs don't really like resonate with them. It just feels like they they're just a result of what they've gone through. Um, or there's somebody else's belief that were imposed onto them or something like that. So, but yeah, so it's things that, they, that this person wants to let go of like this genuinely, this person genuinely wants to let go of these things and, you know, not just for the relationship with you, but also just for themselves. But it, despite all the sexual energy here and, and this desire to change, it's like, they're still, why are they so in their head? They're so, they're having a lot of anxiety, a lot of like sleepless nights, a lot of, just not knowing how to make this wish manifest. Um, and a lot of it, again, probably stems from these negative beliefs that, that stem from trauma, basically. And it's like if they were to to kind of ground themselves and clear their energy and they'd probably recognize it's it's like you just take the first step. You just you send a message. You make an effort. You don't you know what I mean? You don't like just sit there like there's they're they're making it a lot more complicated than it needs to be. It's like they're in their head about so many different things right now when they really just need to take the first step. Yeah, they just need to have that strength to take the first step step and come out of stagnant energy. honor loyalty integrity you know seeing things from a new perspective making choices about you know what they want doing the healing work doing the shadow work making choices about what they want in their life who they want in their life and that's when they have that new start you know when they when they get themselves out of that stagnant energy when they step out of their comfort zone and they make some sort of move towards you you know even just sending a message or just start just getting things started you know getting things off the ground and you know the knight of swords is about like honor loyalty integrity and the hanged man it's kind of like committing to you know the hanged man here it's like this new way of like like letting go of the things that have, are not serving them anymore letting go of whoever and whatever's been holding them back and 
seeing things from a new perspective and really making their own choices here with the Seven of Cups and doing the healing work and being a little bit more gentle with themselves. Um, you know, because some of them have been running from the shadow work and once they actually do the shadow work, it's like that's when things really clear up for them and they can have this new start with you. Tell me more about why they're so... Like, why are they so ink? Because we got like the... What was it? Like the Eight of Swords and the Nine of Swords and then we got the Nine of Cups reversed. Like, why are they so... What are they so afraid of? Like, why are they so anxious? Ten of Swords. Yeah, they're afraid of... It's really interesting because we have... Let me see actually here. Hold on. Ten of Swords, Ten of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, Temperance. The Hierophant. Two of Cups. Queen of Cups. Six of Cups. Two of Pentacles. The Moon. The King of Cups. Queen of Swords. Hmm. I feel like, let me see here. So we've got the Queen of Wands, the Temperance, the Hierophant. All these cards are about like, I mean, Temperance is more about like a balance, but the Two of Cups is a soulmate, is, you know, like a commitment, soulmate relationship. Hierophant can be about marriage. It can be about like long-term commitments. Then we have Queen of Cups, Six of Cups. Two of Pentacles. I feel like some of them are afraid that some of them are afraid of, of a lack of balance. It's almost like they don't trust this energy. Like they don't trust themselves. It's like they're afraid that they're going to come in and they're going to be they're going to end up in a position where they're nostalgic and they're missing this queen of cups energy that you used to carry or male or female. Um, and that there's like this, this, you know, two of pentacles is about like finding a balance. And then we have the moon and the, the king of cups and queen of swords. So I almost feel like they're afraid that you're going to change up on them if they got with you, which it's, it's an unfounded fear, but I do feel like that fear probably stems from past relationships. Um, because when we have, like, the Queen of Wands is very passionate, very charismatic. And then we have, like, you know, like, the Queen of Cups. But it's, like, then we have the Queen of Swords. So it's almost, and again, it could be male or female. So it could be, you know, take it as it resonates. This could be the, the King of Swords for you. Or it could even be a man that's in Queen of Swords energy. You know, take just, again, take it how it resonates. But it's almost, the Moon to me is usually about, like, you know, things being hidden. But I always, I usually see this as, like, a positive card. Even though it's cloudy and there's things being hidden, it's like there's still some sort of, I, I feel like it's like about intuition. I always see this as intuition. I always see this as, as things that are hidden coming to light. And I, I think that this person is afraid. I think this person probably got with somebody in the past who changed up on them once they had them. Like this could have been a narcissist. This could have been somebody that that kind of played the role of like the sweet boy or girl next door type. And then when they got together at a certain point, down the road, I feel like it it became abusive or toxic, or this person had like a whole another side of their personality that they just did not see coming. Um, or they had like just patterns or whatnot that it like when they saw the patterns, it was like kind of too late. So I get that for one thing, I feel like this person's kind of afraid of of oh yeah, of you of you switching up. It's like they're afraid that I think they're kind of afraid that you're just in like this gentle, like, cause you were represented by the queen of wands and queen of cups. So I kind of feel like, and again, male or female, I just feel like they, they were kind of afraid that like you're in this gentle, loving, supportive energy, but that maybe you're just doing that to 
like manipulate them or maybe it's maybe that is who you really are but maybe you have a, a darker side or you have a whole other side of your personality that they just haven't seen they're they're afraid of being the one that's vulnerable basically they're afraid that like you're going to get them that you're going to be in that energy that's that kind of seductive energy that you know queen of wands or king of wands is very charismatic passionate seductive beautiful you know very attractive the uh, queen of cups or king of cups is very um emotionally available mature uh, you know well grounded um open hearted so they kind of see you as a mix of either the queen and queen or, queen or king of wands and the queen or king of cups like that's kind of how they view you uh, with those personality aspects that those those uh court cards carry and yeah i just feel like this person just feels like when they're not viewing, I don't think they're used to a healthy relationship, but I also don't think that they're, I think that they see relationships almost like a game. Like they, they don't understand, like they almost see it as like a power struggle. Like they see, it's almost like this person sees being empathetic and gentle and open hearted as like something that you just do to get what you want or they don't understand how someone could just be like that long term. Like they don't understand, like they don't fully grasp how that could just be part of someone's personality, you know? And it's not saying that they think you're fake. Like they might feel like that is a genuine part of who you are, but they feel like it's like somebody who has a very pessimistic outlook on relationships. So they're like, well, okay, these, these traits are probably real, but you know, maybe they're just, maybe they're just emotional and supportive in the beginning, and then they're going to change down the road and become somebody completely toxic. Or, you know, maybe they're only being emotional and sensitive and loving because they want something from me. Like maybe they want, maybe they're trying to use me for something. Like they're not used to someone just being genuinely that way without getting anything in return. Um, And so I think there's this fear that it's like down the road, it's like they're, I think they have this fear that you're trying to, I don't want to say trick them. They're afraid of becoming the king or queen of cups. So this person has been like a king or queen of swords type. And I feel like they're afraid of becoming the king or queen of cups. They're afraid of like becoming in that energy with you. Like they're afraid of, um, Again, I don't think I don't think that being tricked is the right word. It's more like they're afraid of uh, how do I explain it? Because I mean, I feel like they do know that that's genuinely who you are too. Like they don't feel like it's just like a trap or anything necessarily, but it it just feels like they like maybe they think that you're presenting the best side of yourself or something like that and that you're just trying to kind of seduce them into getting into this king or queen of cups energy and being vulnerable and being open with them and matching their energy and then they're afraid that as soon as they do that as soon as they become the king or queen of cups you're going to switch up on them and you're going to become the king or queen of swords and you're going to be guarded and um you know, cold and distrusting, like, like you're, they're, they're basically afraid that you're going to become someone completely else, but they're going to be too in love with you to be able to step back and protect themselves from getting hurt at that point. They're going to be, it's like, they're afraid of that, like imbalance basically. So this might be somebody who just kind of thinks that it's like they have a toxic way of viewing relationships it's like they think it's just a game or they think it's always a power struggle it's like all about ego like all about like who's in control who's on top and again that's probably stems from trauma but it's still like you know they're not recognizing that what they have here with you is just genuine it's not it's not a game you don't care about your pride you don't care about ego you don't care about one-upping anybody you're genuinely like you were genuinely just trying to love them. You're genuinely the king or queen of cups. Like that's just who you are. You know what I mean? You might be the king or queen of wands as well. Like you have different sides of your personality, but not in a bad way. You know, it might be something that people aren't used to, but it's not like you have like this whole other, you know, cold, detached, just heartless side. Like, no, that's not really a thing. I mean, you're probably in this energy, like when you have to be as someone's like, abusing you yeah you'll, you probably have that side of you where you can tell someone to f off but that's not really who you are that's like a very rare energy that you get into I think for the most part you're you're more in a line with the cups and wands energy not so much with the swords um 
But yeah, it's like the way they, they view the relation, like relationships in general. It's like they just again, if they keep seeing it as a game, if they keep seeing it as a power struggle, as something that it's like. And even if it comes from trauma, it's like they feel like they have to win, like they're not understanding. And I feel like you were on like a whole different mentality where you're like, you know, like you're just, again, genuinely just the king or queen of cups. Like you're, you're you don't care about ego. You don't care about winning or beating anybody. You don't care about, you know, power struggles or whatever. You're genuinely just trying to you know, be happy and, and love this person. There's, there's not, you don't see it as some kind of game that you're trying to play. But yeah, because this person is viewing it from that perspective, because they're seeing it like some kind of game, it's like, they're afraid that, you know, once they, once they're vulnerable with you, once they're open and loving that it, it's like, it's, it's so weird. It's such a toxic way of, I mean, I don't want to say it's a toxic way of viewing things. Like I understand like this person has been through a lot of trauma, but, it, but again, just coming from that perspective of seeing it as a game, they're like, I'm just, I don't mean to laugh, but it's almost like they feel like they lose the game if they're the king of cups and they lose the game, they lose the game if they're the queen of cups. And it's like, you were never even playing the game to begin with. Like they've been playing this game with themselves. They've been playing this game in their head or with past relationships. You were never even, you were never even playing this damn game with them. You were always just trying to love them. Like, it's just, I'm just, I'm not trying to laugh, but it's just like this person's like, I just feel this person's energy being like, I lose if I'm the king of cups or I, I lose the game if I'm the queen of cups. And you're like, dude, what fucking game are you talking about? Like, what game are you playing here? Like, I'm not like, I wasn't even playing that game with you. <laughs> um, it reminds me, I had, <laughs> it remi sorry, just a random funny example, but it really reminds me of like, this was probably like five, six years ago, but I had this friend that just loved playing uh, Magic the Gathering and I would play it with him sometimes. But there was one time when I was like passed out on the couch and I was just trying to sleep and he just like, I was like half awake and he just started playing the, like he just started like putting the cards down for me and like playing the game with me. And I was, I was like started laughing cause I was like, I wasn't even awake, but he just decided that I was playing the game with him anyway. And I was like never involved. It was just him playing with himself and pretending like it was me. And I was half asleep while he was doing it. So it kind of reminds me of that energy where it's like, you're like, dude, what kind of game are we playing? I don't, I don't get, I don't get it. Like, are we, are we winning a prize for this? Like, and you're like, what the fuck's going on? Like, but yeah, they feel like if they're, they feel like if they get, if they allow themselves in this energy that you're going to, it's like they, they lost the game and you're going to switch up on them and be, suddenly become somebody that you're not like, you're, you're suddenly going to become a king or queen of swords and just be detached and be heartless and be whatever. Um, and then they just feel like they're going to be trapped. Like they're, you know, like they're not going to be, they're going to be too in love to, they feel like people, I think they have this mentality where they feel like people just like wait until they're too in love to be able to leave. And that's when they switch up on them. So they're, they kind of try to pretend like they're not sensitive or they try to pretend like they're detached or whatever to kind of, you know, because they feel like once somebody knows that they have them, that they're just going to do whatever and just switch up on them and just become this person. And then they're kind of just screwed. But I mean, it, it, it could have been like that with their exes. So, I mean, I'm not saying that this trauma is, this person's trauma isn't, I was going to say this trauma's person. I'm not saying that this person's trauma isn't like, it, I'm, I'm not saying I don't understand it to, to an extent. But yeah, I think that I think that reality and what's in their head from past relationships and trauma are two very different things, basically. Because I honestly feel like and they might have also dealt with people in the past that were very insecure and just wanted what they couldn't have, which might be another part of the issue is where they they think it's a game where they think it's a power struggle, where it's like with you, I feel like you're genuinely confident, like, you know who you are, you know what you want. So that power struggles, mind games, not being emotionally available, um, someone not knowing what they want, all of that stuff is a huge turnoff for you. Like that's not something, it might be something their ex is liked, but it's not something you like. It's not something that somebody that's genuinely confident and knows who they are is going to like. So I think it's almost like the opposite of what they're thinking. It's like, no, you're not going to become the king or queen of swords if they get in this energy. You're actually going to match their energy and be, you know, we have the, where was the queen of cups? I swear I saw the queen of cups somewhere. It's like actually the opposite where you're going to, 
you would match this energy. Like you would be really turned on by this person being the queen or king of cups. Like I feel like for you, Aries, I feel like you're somebody that likes, I feel like you're turned on by people that are emotional and sensitive and romantic and empathetic. People that, you know, know what they want. People that are emotionally open. People that go after what they want. Um, people that are dominant and assertive in the right ways. Like, I think that you're turned on by that energy. So it's like, no, like you wouldn't become the queen of swords or king of swords on them. You would, you would actually become their divine counterpart. If they were to step up and get into this king or queen of cups energy, you would match that energy and you would be emotional and receptive and vulnerable right back with them. And you would be turned on by that energy. But yeah, they're used to people that are turned off by that energy or by people that, if not turned off, then by people that at least take it for granted or take advantage of it. The second thing they're afraid of, I believe, is, oh, 35 minutes, damn, I didn't mean to make this so long. Um, and as I was saying, please comment below if this resonates, like even just leaving a heart react comment, just like a heart comment below, it really helps me because it gets these, these videos out there. Ten of Swords, Ten of Pentacles. It's like they're afraid of failure and heartbreak, but they're also afraid of success. It's like, it's like, what is that quote? It's like, if you're dating somebody, you're either going to break up or you're going to marry them eventually. And both things are terrifying. I feel like that person kind of has this mentality too. They're afraid of getting hurt, but they're also afraid of like success. They're afraid of, it's like, they're just afraid of loss in general, but let me pull a few cards. Like, is this person getting out of this mentality? Is this person healing? Yeah. Death and transformation. Yeah. The blindfold is coming off. So this person is going to get out of this mentality. Eight of Pentacles is about patience, perseverance, studying. You know, we see this book in this, in this image too. Um, so I feel like it's not going to be like, it might not be an overnight thing, but it's going to be one of those things where it's like, they're going to have to relearn some things. They're going to have to really Knight of Pentacles, yeah, that's also kind of slow moving, but it's very stable and loyal and grounded. So it's almost like this person might have to go through like a kind of like a tower moment. Um, the Emperor, the Empress. Because it's like, like we were saying, it's like they have to, Four of Pentacles, Knight of Cups. Like we were saying, it's like this person has to like rethink how they do relationships and how they, this, this isn't like anything, you're like the opposite of what they've dealt with before. So it's, it's like, they're not, it's kind of like fucking up their whole worldview because this is somebody who likes to predict and control everything. This is somebody who likes to have everything mapped out and like you being the opposite of what they've dealt with. It's like kind of, it's just, it's kind of shaking things up. It's like a tower moment for them. So it might take them a bit of time to kind of find this balance and be like, damn, this is like, like, what do I do with this? Like, this is different. What does this mean? It's like, there's so many truths and so many epiphanies that are coming out for this person, but it might take some time for them to like process these epiphanies and process these new ways of thinking and new ways of, of doing relationships and whatnot. So anyway, I hope that helps. Um, like I said, I really appreciate your comments. And if you'd like a reading, my email is below in the description box. That email is dragonenchantress at aol.com. Thanks for watching.